All right, here we go. We're gonna start right here with the propane. We'll lift your propane cover off. Underneath we have two 20 pound propane bottles. They are both full. You have an automatic regulator back here. So if you're running with both bottles open, when you run one empty, it will automatically switch over to the other bottle. <clears throat> There's a post here that will determine initially which bottle it pulls from, provided that bottle is open. However, I'm gonna recommend that you run with one bottle open and run with one bottle closed because there is no gauge. So that way when you run this bottle empty, you have to actually physically come out here and open the other bottle. So now it's on your mind that you're on your second bottle, you can be a little more conservative with your propane and start thinking about getting the other bottle filled up. We're gonna leave this one on just for now so that we can test a few things on the inside. I will also point out you have an external LP port right here behind the battery box. It is a pre-regulated 25,000 BTU service. It's gonna be good for a small camping stove or maybe even a little space heater. <clears throat> We're gonna find a little rubber hose inside that'll fit that fitting. The next thing we're gonna talk about are your batteries. <clears throat> you have two AGM batteries, so they're gonna be maintenance free. One fuse in here I want you to be aware of is a 15 amp blade fuse. It's for this solar plug right here. You do have a triple plug on the roof. If you wanted to permanently mount some solar panels to the trailer, it is pre-wired for that. But you can plug in a portable solar panel. It's already wired into your batteries and it'll take over charging from there. Also next to this is your spare tire. Back here we have a cotter pin holding a slide pin. Pull those and this handle will drop down. Your spare is gonna slide out this direction. It's gonna be 80 PSI on your spare tire, just like your road tires. If you'll come around the corner here. We have your gross vehicle weight and tire pressure sticker. Again, it's gonna be 80 PSI on your tires. You wanna maintain that pressure for best towing and also best tire wear. Above that will be the fill port for your onboard water tank. This is a gravity fill, so you'll just put your water hose in there and fill it on up. I'm gonna show you how that you can set the tank monitor up so that you can look in through the window and watch the status. But if you overfill the fresh water tank, it's gonna come out of the vent port next to the fill port, not inside the trailer. You wanna make sure that you're cycling through the water in your fresh tank every two weeks. After two weeks, it will start to taste stale. And if you store the trailer in the summertime in the heat, after about 30 days, the water inside there will start to smell like feet. So you wanna make sure you drain that. Down below, we have the storage tube for your sewer line. This is gonna hold a 15 foot collapsible sewer tube. Next is gonna be your outdoor shower. Now, if you're using this with the onboard water tank to get pressure here, you'll need to turn on the onboard water pump. The city water connection does provide its own pressure throughout the trailer here as well. When you winterize the trailer, it's very important for you to remember to disconnect this wand and drain it. This wand is made of plastic. It is also outside of the insulation. I've seen a lot of these come back cracked. I will actually stow it just like this, capturing the little rubber gasket here. As long as you leave these two knobs turned off, you won't have water leaking out of here. And it's just as simple as connecting it back together if you needed to use it. That way you don't forget. This is gonna be your city water connection. This is where you'll connect your water at your camping site for your on-demand water. This has a built-in 50 PSI regulator, so do not add an external regulator. You won't get any water pressure passing through. But it is also plumbed through the onboard water pump. So if the site you're staying at has weak water pressure, you can turn on the onboard pump and it will boost the pressure at your faucets, but you are not filling the onboard tank through this fitting, only through the port forward. Next to that is your waste tank clean out valve. <clears throat> when you attach your water line there, it's gonna put water directly into the waste tank, which is where the water or the toilet water will empty. We'll talk a little more about that here in just a moment. Next to that is your water heater. This is an on-demand water heater. I will mention that you have a hot propane exhaust coming out of here when you're using the water heater. So you wanna make sure that you do not block this port with anything that is combustible. Down below, we have the exhaust for your furnace. Here in Texas, we have mud dauber wasps. We have a screen that we're going to install for you to keep those bugs out of there. 
Also, again, make sure you do not block this with anything combustible. Camp power comes in here. It's a 30 amp service at 110 volts. This is your shore cord, as they call it, and it is 25 feet long. Below that, we have a cable port. If you're staying at a campsite that offers cable, you can connect it here. And once we get inside, I'll show you how to get the signal to pass through to the TV. Down below, we have your waste clean out. You do have a light in case you need to connect at night, and you will put your waste tube right here on this, and you have one waste valve. Before you pull that valve, attach a water line to the waste tank clean out valve and start adding fresh water. You must top it all the way up to 100% with fresh water before you pull the valve because it is a gravity drain. You need the maximum volume of water to help carry all that solid out waste out the first time. You will notice that the water comes out of this port much faster than you can get it back in the waste tank valve. So when you see the flow diminish, close the valve and fill it right back up to the top with fresh water. You're going to do this five or six times until that flow has gone from pretty muddy to pretty clear. Once it's as clean as you can stand, close the valve and continue to allow fresh water to fill back into the waste tank until it reads about 5% on your waste tank gauge. At that point, turn the water off and go inside and add your tank chemical into the toilet. You should let it set around all the time with about this much water on the bottom of the waste tank. So as you're towing, it's sloshing around, helping to keep the sides clean so your sensors will read really well. And any waste that was left behind will be trapped in that chemically treated water and it will exit the next time you empty the waste tank. Also at that point, your toilet will be ready for use. So all you would need to do is add some water to the bowl and go ahead and do your business. Once you're finished, come outside and disconnect your sewer line. You are, if you are staying at a camping site that has a sewer connection, you can leave the tube attached, but you must leave the valve shut until you're actually empty in the waste. If you were to leave the valve open, the water that you need to catch the things that you're putting inside the toilet is going to run out, and when they fall to the bottom, they're going to dry out and smell. So you can keep your sewer line attached, but you must leave the valve shut until you're actually empty in the waste. We'll come around the back here, and starting at the top, you have a backup camera that has a microphone. So whoever's back here, if they're given directions, if they speak towards the camera, they can be heard wherever the monitor is. Down below, we have your main outside storage compartment. In here, we're gonna find the manual crank for your stabilizer jacks. <clears throat> you do have four stabilizer jacks, one at each corner. We're gonna place this on the little threaded rod above the foot. Before you crank the stabilizers down, you want to make sure that you have leveled the trailer front to back with the tongue jack and also disconnected the tow vehicle. If you operate the tongue jack with the stabilizer jacks down, you will overpower and crush them. Also, if your camping side is unlevel side to side, you need to pull that low side up on some blocks and level it beforehand. Again, they are just stabilizer jacks. Once you've got it level, it's as simple as cranking it on down. You're going to run it down until the foot touches the ground, and then you're going to give it just a little extra pressure. I like to start here in this corner and work my way counterclockwise around. So I'll do the two rear, and then I do the two front, so that way I'm not overpressuring any of them. The most important thing for you to remember about your stabilizer jacks is to bring them back up before you tow out. If you fail to do so, you will simply rip the undercarriage out from under your trailer. So please do not do that. Now I will also point out there is a light inside your storage compartment back here. This light will go out when you hit the master disconnect, but I will recommend that you turn as many things off as possible so that way when you turn it back on, it's not a large surge of electricity. If you'll come around the corner here, you do have a dual 110 plug, just your standard 30 amp 110. We'll reach inside and grab your awning tool and pull the awning out on this side. You do have two travel latches. You want to make sure you disengage those first. 
put the little short end in there, and twist it away. One down here. When you pull the awning out, it's very important for you to pull away and not straight down so you don't scratch the side of the trailer with the awning tool. Pull it out until the flap drops, grab the stabilizer arm and place it up here on the head. Always put it here, do not ever put it here. If you put it down here, it's gonna bend right here and it will break off. Once you've got it in place, spear it forward to lock it. We'll come here and do the other side. Now at this point, we can start to extend it. You do have four of these little notches and you can do two at a time. I will typically start with one. We'll come over here and do a couple of them. And we'll step back over here and do a couple more. Now you'll notice how I've got this at an angle. This is a sun shade. So if you have more sunlight coming in from one side or another, having it at an angle is totally appropriate. It is not a heavy wind or a heavy rain shade. It is made of aluminum. It's designed to be lightweight. It cannot take the torque of a heavy wind and heavy rain always accompanies a heavy wind. So if it starts to blow or pour, make sure you fold it back in. The strap here is going to roll up. And eventually it will tuck out of your way in this loop right here. Folding it in is just the reverse of bringing it out. So we'll drop a couple of notches here. We'll come over here and do a couple. Pull here to release. And then we will place this on the travel rest. You do not need to lock it in place. Just set it there. Come over here and drop this last notch. Pull here to release. Make sure at this point that you've got a hold of it. Grab the strap. You can use the awning tool to return it if you need to. You will capture it like so. Run it to right about there. Let it snap in those last couple inches so it's nice and tight and it doesn't wrinkle. Please make sure you remember to re-engage your travel latches. We're going to go over your door next. <clears throat> These doors were built in pairs. It's very important that you close them in pairs. If you have the screen door closed like this and you close the main door onto it, it will damage the screen door. They were built as a pair. Make sure that you have them secured together. The reason is that you have a thick rubber gasket and a two-stage latch. If you do not close the door with enough force, that second stage does not engage. You can push it through, but the door was designed to be slammed. The large key here is going to be for your deadbolt, and the smaller key will be for the door latch. The deadbolt on this trailer is a post. Take care that this is not sticking out when you go to slam the door, but you want to use this when you're towing. It will do a much better job of keeping the door shut than this locking claw. When this is locked, as it is now, it's still open. And even though it will close around the stud, there's gonna be a gap at the back and theoretically the trailer could get twisted or tweaked and the door could come popping open. This post is gonna prevent that. Make sure that you do not leave your key in the door and open the door all the way. You're gonna put a nice dent in a $5,000 panel and you're gonna break your key off. The next thing we're gonna go over is your step. Very simple, you will lift from the rear, hold the step in, and then pull it straight back out, just like so. If you'll follow me inside, I will point out that you do have a fire extinguisher right here by the door. You also have a drawer underneath this dinette seat. 
This drawer is suspended, so make sure you don't put anything in there that's super heavy like a Dutch oven. On the wall, we have a couple light switches. One for the overhead, and the second one for the step light right outside the door. Up here in this cabinet is where we'll find the monitor for your backup camera and your radio. This radio can be paired with your phone. The code to pair it is right here. Also, the stand for the TV comes with it, including an AC plug. In here, we have that little rubber line that's going to fit your LP port out front. And all of the 2021 models come with their own tire tool. All right, to fold the bed down, we're going to lift up and stow the, stow the leg. We're going to continue to lift to pull the two tabs out of the wall and drop it down. Now, if we were really making it into a bed, you would simply push the cushions out of the way and take the short end of the end pieces and put them in the middle. To reverse that, you will lift up. You're going to tuck the two tabs into the wall and drop your table leg. Down below, we have your propane detector. This propane detector is hardwired into the battery, so when you first add power to the trailer, the light will be red, but it will be silent. The key with that is it needs to be making noise and red. Next to that, we have your master battery disconnect. We're going to turn this off now. We are going to continue the walkthrough with that turned off. That will demonstrate that <clears throat> you can use the trailer plugged in bypassing the battery if you're connected to a shore power. The only thing that is no longer occurring, it is no longer charging the battery. However, when you're towing, the tow cable is charging your battery and it does not care what direction that switch is. Next to that, we have your refrigerator. This is a Nova Cool refrigerator. It runs off of batteries. It's going to take two to three hours to get completely cold. And once you have gotten it completely cold, it will stay cold inside of there without a power source for five or six hours. The little knob here is your on off switch. Seven will be the coldest and the zero of course is turned off. This little tab here is going to hold the door shut when you're towing. But when you store it, use this to prop the door open so that it doesn't mold or mildew on the inside. We have your range here. In order to light this, you're going to turn it to light and you're going to hold it in. We'll click the igniter until it lights. It might take just a few moments to clear the air out of the lines. You want to make sure when you're doing so that your propane bottles are in fact open. Oops. And now the other side. Now if you've been cooking on these and they're nice and hot, give them a chance to cool before you close the lid. The lid is made of tempered glass and it could possibly shatter. Up here we have your smoke detector. This 9 volt battery is now good for six months. Please change it out after six months so they're nice and fresh. The same thing for your carbon monoxide detector over here in the bedroom. All right, so here on the wall, we have your sea level monitor. This is gonna give you your battery voltage. That is 13.6 volts. Also the status of your water tanks. Your fresh water is empty. And so is your waste tank. When you press the button twice, a little red dot appears next to the number that will hold the value on the screen for five minutes. So when you're filling and emptying, you can look in the window and watch the status of your tank. That's also true for the fresh tank, but not the battery just the water tanks. Water pump control is here as well, so turn this switch on and that turns on your onboard water tank. Water pump, sorry. Below we have your <clears throat> hot water heater. It's currently set on 118 degrees. It will go as high as 124 degrees and it will go as low as 96 degrees. This is an on-demand water heater, so as long as you have your propane on, with a water flow, I'm sorry, with a water supply flowing through it, it will operate almost continuously. In here, I've hidden your remote for your TV and also a 110 plug tester. 
Down below we have your microwave. Your microwave is only available when you're plugged into a 110 power circuit. Over here we have the restroom. In this particular trailer, I am going to recommend that you tow with your drain plug-in. You have a combination waste tank under there, and that is possible black waste that could be splashing in here. The drain plug will prevent that. <clears throat> to flush your toilet, a partial step will fill the bowl, and a full step flushes it. Of course, you do add your tank chemicals straight down into the toilet. Privacy is achieved thus. You have a little clothesline that can be stretched across and tightened down. That's going to be good for a bathing suit or a dish towel, but not a bath towel. Above, we have a manual vent fan, so this one will be pushed open. Little red button's going to turn it on and then pull it shut. Finally, your shower head does have a pause feature, so you can pause that water as you're soaping up and conserve some of the heat. The light switch for the bathroom is in the bedroom area. And then, of course, the one next to that is the overhead. Above that, we have your furnace control. Hard switch at the top to turn it on, and then turn the rocker up at the bottom. The furnace is below the bed on the road side. Does not light immediately. It'll take about 10 seconds to clear the combustion chamber to light. It does wail just a little bit, so if you listen for that, you'll know it's lit. It's trying to light right now. And there it goes. So we're going to turn that off, turn the rocker off before you turn the switch at the top off. And you'll note now that it's off, it is still running. So it's going to run for two more minutes. It's doing a cool down cycle. You want to allow that to finish before you take the power from the trailer. Over here on this side, we have your TV. Your TV. The DVD player is here on the side of the TV. And against the wall, we have a white plate with a green light. This green light indicates that the digital antenna on the roof is powered, but this is a two-way switch, so we'll press this button here. The light will go out and it's now allowing the signal to pass through from the cable port on the side of the TV. I'm sorry, on the side of the trailer. Also, this is the one item on the trailer that will cause a draw through your master disconnect. So you wanna make sure before you store it that you turn the digital antenna booster off. And please secure the TV before you tow out. Up above, is your air conditioner. Now you do have an optional heat. We'll turn it on optional heat and then turn it down. There is a heated coil that's low velocity air is blowing across and it's gonna do a pretty good job of knocking the chill off of the air. But if it's really cold, you're gonna make sure you use the furnace, which is propane powered. Also, this is not available when you're not plugged into your shore power. The blue options are gonna be your air conditioner. So we'll turn the fan on and then we'll turn it over to get the compressor to kick on. This is an optional vent. You have one on each side. And of course, one on either end. This is the intake, and over time you will notice hair and lint get trapped in that. So if you wanted to clean that off, pop it right out, hose it off in the sink, and click it right back in place. Bear in mind that the air conditioner only operates when you are plugged into a 110 power source. Finally, we have your exhaust fan. This one is fully manual. You will crank the lid open here. It is a three-speed fan, drawing air out. So when you're cooking or when you're showering, you wanna make sure you've got this on. There is a four amp glass fuse here, so if something stops that fan blade, it's gonna pop this fuse instead of burning up the motor. And if you crank it shut while it's running, it will turn itself off. Bear in mind that the lid is made of plastic, so you do not wanna to tow with that open. One last thing, underneath the bed, on the curb side is gonna be your main breaker and fuse box. All of your breakers are listed on this sticker here, and all of your fuses are listed on the sticker on the other side. And that's gonna be it, folks, so thank you very much. Thanks for watching our video. Be sure to drop a comment below if you have any questions or if there's any content you'd like to see. Go ahead and give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again from Airstream with the FW.